Today in the five minute saltwater aquarium guide, we laser target an LED solution for a new saltwater tank, not just selecting the right light, but the actual details and getting it set up correctly. So lighting will never be an issue and a few lighting tips that every reefer needs to know. All that's coming up. Hey, I'm Ryan, your host of Beers TV and the five minute saltwater aquarium guide. This is a clear, simplified, direct path to setting up that first successful reef tank. This is episode 13, it's time to talk reef tank lighting. There are four things we need to know to get this right. Number one, above all else, light is here to provide energy to the corals and the primary source of nutrition. Every discussion about reef lighting should start with optimal health for the corals. Second, and just short of that, is the reason we own saltwater aquariums, it's because we want them to look cool, so the light needs to make the tank and corals look awesome with ideal coloration. Close to that, we also want it to at least look decent above the tank, preferably a nice clean install that adds the tank rather than takes away from it. And lastly, I think we all want a reasonable price. Solid, reliable lighting options which meet those goals won't be the cheapest thing for your tank, but you shouldn't have to get a second mortgage either. The most important thing you need to know to get this all right is your own goals. Identify what they are, a process similar to what we just did, and then manage to those goals. So with that in mind, for the 40 gallon breeder, I believe two AI Prime 16 HDs are the best choices out there for the balance of those goals. And there are a few distinct reasons why we chose it for the five minute guide for this tank. Aqua Illuminations is one of the most established reef lighting options out there, has all the important spectrums for coral growth. The size or wattage is balanced for a tank this size, meaning you'll have the power you need, but not overdoing it. The spread from two will adequately cover a 36 inch tank, and I can confidently say this light is suited to the purpose of the types of corals that we want to stock here. Also upgradable down the road if you want to add more pucks and space them closer for more advanced corals. The spectrum the AI Prime puts out also highlights the coral's natural fluorescence really well and produces a high contrast, visually interesting tank. There are two mounting arms, the flex arm and the fixed mount. We ended up going with the fixed mount here because it looks sharp. And again, these low profile lights are what accents the outside of the tank. So the entire thing looks sharp. At around 200 bucks a module, they're not free, but they're also much lower cost than many other popular options. With the Red Sea E170, you don't have to shop for light because it comes with its own reef LED and mounting kit. In this case, because the tank is closer to a square, it can be lit with a single but higher powered light. I mentioned this in an earlier episode, but included gear like lighting is one of the reasons why the all-in-one tanks like the E170 end up being not all that much more expensive than their standard counterparts. The easiest way to set up lights like the Reef LED and AI Prime is to listen to those reefers who've come before you and already learned the hard way. In this case, I'll just give you the exact settings for the spectrum and intensity that I would use for both the Red Sea and AI Primes. In this case, tune these specific tanks for the type of corals that we're going to be adding to the tank. If you tune these lights to these settings in about a 10 hour light cycle, lighting will not be a challenge on these tanks. Blues are often one of the dominant lights here because that's the spectrum peak that matters the most to the corals. Add in white until it looks good to the eye. I'd be careful with the reds and greens because they can end up unnaturally high. In most cases, no more than 20%, but that depends on the light. Notice the photo period ramps down on both ends. That's not because the corals require that gradual change, but done so you can see the tank longer at lower intensities, even some cool visual effects like dusk or moonlights. If you're doing a different shape tank or different lights or different corals and this is your first tank, the best advice is rent a PAR meter which measures the strength of light for 50 bucks and then tune them intelligently rather than guess. The success rates of tuning using a tool to measure to a goal are just dramatically higher than guessing for your first time. Avoiding common challenges just puts you into a higher success pool. With LPS corals, polyps, and similar like we're doing here, we're often looking for 75 to 150 PAR in as much of the tank as possible. When you're ready for more advanced corals like SPS, the sweet spot is often between 250 and 350 in as much of the tank as possible. I mentioned last week that the five minute guy is gonna have some tips that change the way that you reef and dramatically increase your success rates. I do have some for lighting. First par is not horsepower where more light is better. In fact, you're a hundred times more likely to kill your corals with too much light than not enough. So resist the temptation to ride the edge. The edge isn't leading you anywhere good. PAR is also not something you can measure accurately with the human eye. The spectrum of light the human eye perceives as brightness and what is usable PAR for the corals are totally different. And the human eye also auto irises to brightness. Some reefers may get close by luck, intuition, or solid advice, but it's far from easy for a new reefer to estimate PAR with the human eye. 
That said, you can guess and watch what the corals tolerate, and even though it's a lower percentage path, it's by far the most common path. If the light is too bright or the par too strong, the corals will shrink up and retract tissue to protect themselves from the intense light. Best advice here is just start low and work your way up, not the other way. If you don't have enough light, the corals will get puffy, stretch out, reach and expand themselves to try to create more surface area to capture more light. If you only hear one thing today, let it be this, because it will help you more than anything else. My good friend Victor at Worldwide Corals once said to me, corals are amazingly adaptive creatures and will adapt to almost any of our mistakes if you just let them be. That means you don't have to get this perfect to be successful, but you do have to resist the temptation to flip the sliders on your LED app all the time. The manufacturers design it like it's a game or toy, but it's life support for an organism that thrives on stability. Success doesn't come from tweaking, it comes from leaving things alone. So resist the temptation and then set it and forget it. One of the benefits of using these two tanks here and the lights we selected today is you can skip all that and just input the settings that we showed you earlier and know you got this lighting thing covered without even thinking about it. Leave the exploration for the next tank upgrade. Lighting is now covered. The next step is one of the most popular components of the filtration called a protein skimmer. This tool mixes air and water to strip out the excess food and fish waste to maintain clean water in the tank. The entire saltwater aquarium guide is always available here, but if you want to know how a protein skimmer works and how to set them up on tanks like these, that's coming up right here.